Hello everyone, welcome back to Kronos Plays Virtue's Last Reward. Today, let's get the hell out of here. The lock to the door. It says lock. <laughs> Holy shit. That's surprising. Let's go! Okay. Right. Uh, let's do this. Three, two, four. I mean one. Alright, so I spent way too long on that colored puzzle last time. Uh, way longer than I thought I did. I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be, like, half the episode. <laughs> when, I, when I was editing it, I was like, oh my god. I actually spent, like, half the episode, probably more, uh, looking at this color puzzle and trying to figure it out. Is this uh, another warehouse? It's just like the one on the last floor. Well, it's a little different. There's even a big old door in the same spot where the number nine door is in the other warehouse. I mean, you're not wrong, but the doors are a different color. There's Memento More. True, but it's rusted and over. I don't think it's opening anytime soon. Oh, let's find rust remover. No lever to open it anyway, that I can see. Well, shoot. We couldn't possibly open that with our bare hands. Duh. But maybe with actual bare hands. How much do you think that thing weighs? Two pounds. You'd have about as much luck trying to lift a pickup truck, even if it was unlocked. I feel like... I feel like a pickup truck would be lighter than that door. Because that door seems gigantic, and it's probably like a foot or so thick. Huh. I want to know what those are. Those are doors, Clover. Those white doors? I mean, with all the components in a truck, I'd imagine that... It still looks like really heavy, but I think a pure, solid, like steel door like that? Because, like, the frame of the, the cars and trucks and stuff like that, like the fiberglass frames, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, isn't that heavy? It's heavy, like, for a normal person, but, like, isn't the main weight of the, tr like, the vehicles, like, the engine and the, you know, the frame? Like the axles and stuff. I know nothing about vehicles. Mm, yeah, <laughs> if that wasn't like obvious. I mean, look at this. It's one of those things that says lock. Yeah, just like the ones next to the other chromatic doors. Cool. So you're saying all the chromatic doors for the next round are white? Yeah, they were different colors before, but... Guess things have changed for this round. Before we could discuss the doors uh, any further, a familiar robotic voice crackled over the speakers. An ambidex gate has been opened. 45 minutes remain until ambidex game polling closes. What? One of the other teams opened the gate early. What in the hell did they do that for? I don't know. Plot advancement? We haven't even started back yet. Never mind, White. We just need to get back up there pronto. Yeah. I'm worried about Quark. We need to hold oh, up he's with dead. Alice and K. The sooner the better. Right. Got Let's it. Let's go. Why are you pointing at me like that? Because you're pointing forward. What the hell is this? Okay. Sure. It was a door. That I've never seen before, I think. We might have saw it last route. Did not look familiar in the slightest. I mean, this is... <laughs> I am now convinced. This is just here to pad time. It is not immersive. It is not plot relevant. It is just padding time. <laughs> that is it. Which is kind of weird, because the game's long enough already, right? I would imagine, I don't know how long the game actually is, but you saw how many routes they are. So I'm assuming it's fine. Are we in a camera? What the hell just happened? We return to the floor A warehouse to find only two people waiting for us. Kay, who's gone through the red door. And Dio, who's gone through the green door. Where's Quark? We took him to the infirmary. 
At the moment, Alice, Fi, and Luna are looking after him. Is he alright? No! He's unconscious, I right? I don't know if I would describe him as alright. Yeah. But apparently, his condition has not worsened, if that's what you mean. Well, that's good. He is still resting. So, straight up, though, like, shouldn't he have been quarantined if we, if, like, we know he has Radical 6? However, we... Good. I'm going to the infirmary. That's great. I, I know we need his bracelet and everything like that, but shouldn't we maybe have brought one of those suits back with us that we could have stuck him in, or maybe just wore ourselves? Uh, Ten Miyoji, please, wait. Ten ignored K and took off a, at a run through the yellow door. And we had to see that for some reason. Dots. Oh dear, he's gone. There was something I needed to tell him. Well, it's not like it matters. The girls will just tell him when he gets there. He ought to calm down once he's seen the kid. Clover and I looked at one another, eyebrows raised. Um... What are they going to tell him? Yeah! Well, you see... Dots. Dots. What? You found virus medicine in the laboratory? Oh, sick. Yes. Unfortunately, we found only a single vial. I call dibs. <laughs> then we can only quir cure Quark's Radical Six. So it would seem. Unless we save it for me. Well, I guess we should head over to the infirmary and see how he's doing. Come on, let's go. Right behind you. Clover, you're not going to... Tell anyone that I sniffed Ten's suit, right? Now. It might take some time for him to recover fully, but the worst is over. Luna's voice was quiet as she stepped back from Quark. She held an injection gun with an empty vial. Delicately, she placed it back on the cabinet. The medicine made Quark pixelated a little bit, but Quark had not been laying laid out on the crude cot. That's not really that crude, dog. That's actually pretty standard, but whatever. And was still sound asleep. His breathing was even, and his expression was peaceful. He looked like any other child who had been drugged into a coma state. What are you talking about? <laughs> what? He looks like any other child, sleeping soundly after a long day of doing whatever. No! Not really! I don't know. I Maybe it's just me, but ever since I could remember... When I sleep, I definitely don't look like I woke up like I was some sort of mannequin that didn't move ever. I was probably why my back's such a mess, but I would be like <laughs> splayed out in different positions. Any trace of insanity he had shown earlier was nowhere to be found, mostly because he was unconscious. Is, is he really going to be okay? We don't know that yet, we're still here. Yes. We analyzed the vial and really shouldn't make promises like that, Luna. The Excelivir. Now that I've administered it, the Excelivir should eradicate the virus completely given enough time, right? Yes, that should be the case. <sighs> Thank goodness. Yeah, what a relief. Things are looking pretty sketchy there for a while, that's for sure. I felt some of the tension disappear from my shoulders and I let out a breath I couldn't I hadn't realized I'd been holding. We weren't out of the woods yet, but at least Quark was safe, and now I could betray him to get revenge on Ten. Ooh. Ten let out a long, shaky sigh and lowered himself onto one of the empty beds. He rubbed his hands wearily across his face, and I thought I saw a glint of tears. Alice, you and Kay, I... I don't know what to say other than thanks. You saved his life. I don't know the words to tell you much that means to me. Oh, please. It was nothing, really. We just happened to be the ones who went through the red door. Where is Kay? He, Special K is out in the warehouse, dog. Here. Yeah, he's in the warehouse. He's still in the warehouse. Dio and Kay stayed behind. They went there to wait for you guys while we came back here. Hey, who opened the door? I'm pretty sure it was Dio, but still, who opened the door? someone should explain what was going on so you wouldn't come back to an empty warehouse. So Dio and Kay were the ones who opened the AB gates? Not both of them. There was only one door open. Huh. Well, we should get back and tell them how Dio. Kay's doing. Kay will want to know at least. Yeah. 
You're right. I nodded and headed back towards the other side of the room. I was nearly there when Ten suddenly spoke. That's right. Huh. You know that memory card we found? Yes. Cronus, did you forget there for a second? No. This thing. Yeah. I think I know how we can take a look at what's on it. Oh, the TV here? What? You don't remember? There was a memory card just like it that we used to solve the puzzles in here. Yeah. He's right. And then the TV. There's a slot next to the screen. It should work for this one, too. I, I would imagine, unless it's like a formatting issue. Oh, yeah. There it is. Right. Yeah. I didn't forget. Well, let's give it a shot. Yeah. I want to see what's on it. Okay. Just give me a minute here. I slid the card into the slot next to the screen. No sooner had I done so than an image of a waveform popped up on the screen. Is there an audio file on here? Why don't we turn up the volume a bit? Sure, crank it up. Luna tapped a few things on the screen and a bar began to move across the screen. Before long, a voice drifted out of the speakers. This is Control. How's it going over there? Bet you missed the sound of my voice, huh? Well, I gotta be honest. It's getting pretty lonely over here, too. Feeling kind of like howling at the moon. Lone wolf style. Okay, well, one, you sound like a weirdo. Two, you sound really familiar. Speaking of which, I'm looking at it right now. The old girl is beautiful. Never seen a moon this full. At that color. It actually just... <laughs> Shows a picture of him <laughs> bent over in, <laughs> in front of a mirror. <laughs> oh, I'm a child. That eclipse, <laughs> what a way to end 2028, huh? The moon's this amazing red. If it wasn't so beautiful, it'd be kind of ominous. Wish you guys could see it too. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing at that. Sorry. Uh. I think I'm still thinking of this guy mooning a mirror and saying how weird the moon looks. You're supposed to be on Mars, aren't you? Mars? So, uh, how are Phobos and Deimos looking right now? Sure hope I'll get to look up at them someday, too. Anyway, over. Those are the moons. Hey, something wrong? Talk to me, guys. I can't. You're recording. What? You gonna play hard to get because we haven't talked in so long? Enough jokes, all right? Knock it off. Where are you guys? Is there something wrong with the radio? You're saying everything's green? Well then, what the hell's going on here? Maybe you should, like, not record this and instead broadcast Why it. Why they responding? Sometimes I make that mistake too. You hit the start streaming button and you're like, oh no, I just want to start recording. Or vice versa. No, the video feed's online. Look, you can see all nine of them. Three at each table. What? Someone hacked our feed? What do you mean, this isn't live? An old clip on repeat? Who would do that? What in the hell is I think they call those here? reruns. This is control. I repeat, this is control. Please come in. I'm asking you to respond. Dog, if they can't hear you, asking even nicely is not going to work. This is... Oh, thank God. You really had me worried there. What happened? Six of us are dead. What? Counting myself, there are only three left. How? Why are... They were killed. What? I... I guess you could say I killed them. Oh. Oh, that's not good. You sound really familiar, too. No. No, that's not quite right. Not just them. Not just these six. All of them. All six billion... Wait, there's six billion people on Mars? We just landed a goddamn rover thing there like a week ago. What do you mean six billion? Soon, I will have killed six billion people. I mean, that is a very impressive kill count. Are you there? Respond! What do you want her to say, dog? Damn it. This is control. I repeat, this is control. We have an emergency situation. We have an unconfirmed report of six deceased test subjects. Six billion deceased test subjects. Support rescue and escort teams to the test site immediately. Shit. What the hell happened in there? 
Dots. So, patient zero for a radical six, maybe? Is is that it? Yes. What on earth was that? Any ideas? I got only frowns and shaken heads in response. Only one person showed a reaction other than stuns confusion. Ten. Long after the audio ended, he stared at the screen, deep in thought. Do you know something, Tenmyoji? Yeah. I think I know what that was. It's probably a transmission from the Mars mission test site. Mars? I'm sorry. It is bright tonight. You mean some kind of space travel? What kind of test site was it? Hmm. Did you know that the government is developing spaceships with particle annihilation engines? Of course. Who doesn't know that? These ships would be able to get humans to Mars a lot faster than old chemical rockets. But they don't want to just send a manned Mars mission off half-cocked. That was the idea behind this test. Yeah, they want it fully cocked. They built a whole complex on this old Air Force base in Nevada. The idea was that it would be a simulation of a manned mission to Mars with a crew of nine men and women. They'd monitor the whole thing and use that data to plan the real mission. Okay, so when you say nine men and women, do you mean nine total people that are men and women? Or do you mean, do you mean nine men and nine women? Thus, 18 men and women. You gotta explain this sort of stuff, like, like you're talking to a child, Ten, because I might not understand. So, what we just listened to was a transmission from that project? Yeah. Why is something like that here? Don't know why. We found it in the safe. No explanation. Dollars to donuts, it's got something to do with Zero's plan. You can get a lot of donuts for dollars. You mean we were meant to hear what was on that card? Yeah. It's all very interesting, but how exactly do you know about all this? Oh, about the simulated Mars mission? Yes. I was involved with the project. Neat. The intent was to create as accurate a simulation as possible. That meant we'd need to simulate the radio silence we'd experience during conjunction. Okay, so you don't actually have six... Okay, I get it now. So, wasn't actually Mars, so it is not br bright tonight. Two, it was Nevada. Three, that's definitely Radical Six then, because the six billion people she was talking about, probably on Earth. And four... Um... Last time I checked, you could buy a dozen of donuts, dozen donuts for like three or four bucks. It's been a while though. Like I used to buy donuts for my team back in the day. It manager shit. It's just being being nice, pretty much. Hey, you're working twelve hours today. Here's some donuts. Sorry, <laughs> but that was a lot of donuts for dollars. The price probably has gone up since then. It was always fun, though, going in and being like, Hey, can I get four dozen donuts? And them just looking at me like, You couldn't have called the head to warn us you were coming? And then just have them angrily throwing donuts. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Sorry. What's a conjunction? But it was, it was funny. I mean, I took all their donuts. It means two things in space are close to each other. They can make in this more. Case, we're talking about a superior conjunction, where Mars and Earth are on the exact opposite sides of the sun. So unless we've got some sort of relay, there'll be a period of time where we won't be able to communicate with each other. What we heard on that card was when the simulated conjunction was scheduled to end. That's when they died. No, we don't know that. They could have died long before that conversation. All we know is that's when it was discovered. So six of the test subjects died, right? <sighs> yeah. Well, do you remember what she said? There was something about how she didn't just kill six people. She said she killed six billion. What the heck did she mean by that? Just what the hell happened there? Ten frowned and looked down at the floor. We were all silent as he paced slowly back and forth across the room. At last, he stopped, raised his head and spoke. The truth is that there's a chance a virus escaped from the test site. You don't say. A virus? Was it a radical Wait, virus? You don't mean... Yeah. Radical six. What? How can that be? I'm just telling you what I know, okay? Nobody's sure how Radical Six got in there in the first place, but... One of the subjects might have been infected when they entered. Or the virus itself might have been an intentional part of the simulation. 
That's a horrible intention. The test site deaths became the index case for a pandemic. Anyway, prevailing wisdom says it got out somehow. Well, Once given the newspaper. Out, it spread pretty quick. All I mean, 100,000? Ain't that quick? And it killed 6 billion people? No, not directly. Best numbers put only a third or so of those deaths as directly caused by Radical Six. Oh, that's good. The other four billion died from the collapse caused by the deaths of that first third. Ah, uh, I mean... Fell apart. Those would have had to be some pretty specific deaths for the world to just fall apart when two billion people died. Like, don't get me wrong. That's actually... That's horrible, and there would be some massive consequences if, like, two billion people just drop dead. I mean, okay, they don't just drop dead, but, like, you know, got sick and then eventually died. That would be bad. That would be... It would be catastrophic, and it would change the world. Being said... I don't think... Also, wait, hold up. Yeah, okay. So, I, I don't think the world would fall apart, right? There would be some drastic changes, of course. But I don't think there would be a world-ending collapse if only 2 billion people died. If 4 billion people died, absolutely. Absolutely the world would fall apart. You're now stuck with two billion people. Who knows what their specialities are? Who knows what age range they are? Or what health style they live? Like, it would... That would be bad. That would be extremely bad. Would it be world ending? I don't know. Like, the whole world falling apart? Yes, but I think it would recover eventually. That being said, now that we say that... Isn't there only like 7 billion people, 7 point something billion people in the world? Or is that increased because people just want to hump like animals? Um, let's see. Let's see. World population. 7.674 billion people of 2019. So, you know, that's probably down a little bit. Uh, currently, maybe, I don't know. Not by much, though, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. It's horrible, but sure, that the small dent in the world population. Um, so when they said six billion people, I thought she was talking about the world's population, like she killed the world. How... How are we talking about this like it's a past tense thing here, Ten? And no one else knows about it? Right? Dots? Anyone? Anyone want to ask him that? How did six billion people in the world die and none of us know about it? But him? Wow, uh, damn. <laughs> I have a, a lot of questions, but I don't even know where to start. I do! I don't even know where to start knowing where to start. Well, no, take that back. Uh, explain that date. Unless I heard this wrong, the day the Rattlesnake 6 got out was December 31st, 2028. Yeah. But that day I got grabbed by the guy in the gas mask was, uh, gas mask was December 25th, 2028. Me too. Christmas Day. Merry Christmas! I was kidnapped on Christmas, too. Clover and I were taken three days earlier, on the 22nd. Yeah. Then, you see what I'm saying, right? That recording was close to a week after we were all picked up. What the hell is going on here? That thing is from the future! See. Ten minutes remain. Until Ambidex game polling closes. Okay. All players, please enter your votes. So we were out for a long time then, right? Is that what's going to happen here? Like, were we frozen or something when we were brought here? Maybe everyone but 
10 was frozen? No, that doesn't make any sense. Because Quark would probably be like, Grandpa, what the hell happened? You look way older. Because, like, unless the virus spread really fast, there's, there's no way 6 billion people died that quickly. And we had time to build this place, I guess. I'm talking about, like, we as, like, the world. If we're assuming this is, like, a quarantine facility or something... If no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. We're out of time. We need to go back to the warehouse. Wait! You haven't answered! I don't care. I need more than ten minutes to explain everything. Okay, well I'm gonna betray your ass, so... It's just gonna make you more confused. Now get moving! That's enough! But... Shut your damn hole or I'm picking betray! Hey, come on now. I mean, you can. It just means none of us get any points. Fine. Do what you want. But I need to get back to the AB rooms. I'd like to stay with Quark. He seems to be doing all right. I'll stay here with him. Uh, don't you guys need to be in the room? If I can do the voting for our pair. Oh, okay. I can trust her. Is that all right with you? Yeah, sure. Well, if you'd be willing to do that, I'd be much obliged. I kind of thought... Like, if you were living, you had to be in the room. Thanks, Luna. Take good care of him. Of course. Luna and Quark aren't about to die, are they? Ten gave her one last nod, then turned and dashed out of the room infirmary. Dashing through the door. Well, that's that, I guess. We should probably be going, too. Yes. We'll just have to wait to hear the rest of what he has to say later. I'd rather just get it all out in the open now, but there's not much we can do. Yeah, this is true. Let's get going then. Hello? Oh, hi. We returned to the warehouse to find only Kay. I explained what had happened with Quark, then glanced around the room. Hey, where's Dio? He has gone into his AB room. Already? Indeed. Then he opened the first AB gate. Of course right? he did. He's an asshole. Of course. This is bad. I won't be able to talk with him. This is going to limit my choices. You've only got one BP left, don't you? Yeah. So you got to choose Betray. The same. If Phi chooses Ally and Dio picks Betray, Phi and Luna will be penalized. Uh, I don't have a choice. I'll have to pick Betray. Yeah. The risk with Ally is just too high. Worst case scenario is you get none. Hey, Alice, don't you have one BB2? That's right. But Kay and I will be playing against Quark. And he'll just default to Ally. I guess you don't need to worry about getting penalized then, huh? But you can betray him, Alice. What if Alice and Kay choose betray? You needn't worry. No, you can. That's fine. I completely understand. That will not happen. Even though, as you have told me, Quark is recovering. He is still weak. Moreover, he is only a child. Yeah? To betray an innocent child would be... Yeah, that would be... Oh, innocent. don't you judge me! Even if you ignore his age or condition, it's hardly fair to take advantage of someone who... You're not even wearing a shirt, Alice! <laughs> so you'll vote Alice? Yes. Of course. Well then, shall we go? Yes. Kay and Alice nodded to one another and disappeared into the AB second, uh, AB room second from the right. Without saying anything, Phi turned and walked into the room just left of theirs. That left only myself, Clover, and Ten. Do you remember what you said to me when you chose the blue door? Uh, that I was gonna betray your ass? Something about how you'd convince me to choose ally? Seems like now would be the time to let me know how you're going to convince me. Well, it's not that complicated. I promise you that Clover and I will vote ally. That's it, pretty much. <laughs> I see. And you figure I'll believe you because you've only got one BP. Once you've told me that you plan to ally, I won't be able to choose betray. Since, if you're telling the truth... You'll kill me! Hmm, not a bad plan, but it assumes that I've taken killing you off the table. Seems like a risky bet for you. Oh, I'm not actually allying with you. I disagree. Why is that? 
Clover's BP is six. If you ally and we betray, then she has enough points to escape, right? She could run off through the number nine door as soon as this round is over. I never... Shut up, Clover! That's easy for you to say. But think about it from my perspective. Sure, you might not, but you also might. If I guess wrong, that's a pretty big loss for me. Well, what if Clover tries to seduce you to get what she wants? It would work. Oh, I mean, what? Huh? That's just an example. What I'm trying to say is that once you two are in that room, Clover might try and make some sort of bargain with you. I'm asking what you're going to do if that happens. Uh, betray you? Are you sure you'll still choose ally? Seduce me, huh? Hey! What are you staring at, you perv? There's no way on earth I'd do anything like that! Ugh! As if! In your dreams, creep! I mean, she's right. Well, that's that then. Not gonna lie, though, I'm a little disappointed. Hmm. So I can trust you. You're gonna choose ally. I'm gonna betray your ass so hard! Yeah! You can trust us. Promise. Of course. We promise. On Alice's shirt, I promise that I'll ally with you. Alright. I guess I'll vote ally too then. Three minutes remain until Abidex game polling closes. Well, looks like we don't have much time left. I'm trusting you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Horrible decision. I'm trusting you too, Sigma. I mean... <laughs> Ten? Ten gave us a curtain nod. Sorry, I always said I trusted you too, and I saw Sigma's name out of the corner of my eye. Ten gave us a curtain nod, then turned and strode into the second AB room from the left. Right, well, let's get to it next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, press like below. If you're not subscribed yet, want to get my video so I can check out some of the content, see if it's to your liking. Once again, thank you for watching. Hope you all have a great day.